And as I said, I'm suspending time warp rules for this very special occasion. It's not every day you get a 30-year-old friend who goes to his grave. While we're waiting for this, I saw a very cute quick today. I can find it again. I don't know if I'll be able to find it again, unfortunately. I am looking for it. Let's see, who is that? Ace Cornea, thank you very much for the follow. This one's kind of cute, too. That's basically the same sentiment behind it. Ah, it's a little bit too big. But yeah, I've been seeing cartoons like that all day. Let's see how our slingshot goes around the sun. The mission is to get to Sarnus, which is basically Saturn. With our new communication satellite, which is a memorial satellite to Cassini. It's an exploration probe designed to relay data about the bodies that it passes, just like Cassini is. The only thing is, it's a little bit, got a few upgrades. This one has a fusion core. It'll last over a, a hundred years. It has, uh, it's based on lithium propulsion. It has a magnetodynamic, magneto <laughs> I'll get my tongue around it eventually. Magnetoplasma dynamic thruster, which is based on, I think, the, um, um, I forgot what they're called. Vasimir engines, but there's also a Vasimir engine, so I'm not sure this is, if this is just an early design or, an, or a newer design. But it uses, it uses lithium as its primary fuel. So all these tanks that are normally uh, fueled with liquid fuel and oxygen have been replaced with lithium. Got a full scanner suite, and unfortunately where Sarnus is a gas giant, it won't do a whole lot. Except for when it's exploring Sarnus's moon, which is an option given we have 21,000 spare Delta V. So we could poke around the system and then finally set ourselves up in a uh, solar orbit. Uh, actually, we're running multiple models. We've got Near Future on here. We've got B9. And we've also got um, uh, Interstellar, inter uh, Kerbal Interstellar Extended, Kerbal Space Program Interstellar Extended, also known as KSPIE. 
the three major mod sets for mob parts. This fusion reactor comes from KSPIE. The lithium engines come from Near Future. And the IFS comes from Near Future's uh, interstellar fuel switch mod, which uh, allows you to toggle out the, the tanks for different interstellar fuel compatible fuels. Uh, we've got the graphite skin wrappers here. I believe these are also from uh, Interstellar. A few extra science kits here. We got a magnetometer, which is from Interstellar, a gravity scanner from Interstellar. Uh, I don't think we actually have any B B9 parts on here right now. Yeah, it's enough Delta V to keep us going for a good long time. Not to mention we just did a slingshot off tool. Believe it or not, the slingshot off jewel wasn't to speed us up, it was to slow us down. We needed a sundial to fall behind Sarnus's orbit. We started off with Sarnus in a very bad position to make a transfer orbit from Kerbin. So my solution was, let's go to jewel and we'll slingshot backwards. Unfortunately, we didn't get enough propulsion to go full retrograde, which is what I wanted to do to, to do an intercept of Cernus rather than a rendezvous with Cernus. Uh You guys know what the difference between an intercept and a rendezvous is? Uh, just for a brief explanation, at least how I think about it, uh, rendezvous. You're coming up to the uh, you're coming up to the um, object that is the target. Well, it's how you stop actually, and your approach. If you're rendezvousing, you're usually coming up from behind. You're speeding up to catch up to it. If you're doing an intercept, you're usually going in an orbit that is 180 degrees from the target's orbit, and you're coming head on at it. That's where you get the difference between a rendezvous and an intercept. Rendezvous, you're meeting up with the orbit. Rendezvous, you're doing a direct inversion of the orbit for an intercept. Intercepts are most commonly used for asteroid encounters because you don't have a lot of time you know, to go fully around the orbit to come back up behind the asteroid and catch it. So rendezvousing with an asteroid, you may not have enough time to do that. It may smack into the planet by the time you catch it. But if you do an intercept of an asteroid coming at it from direct ahead by going 180 degrees to its orbit, meaning coming straight back at it, or as I call it, a bullet catching a bullet, then you can usually prevent the asteroid from, from smacking into a planet. This is painful, even at times, what, one million? Not much longer, folks. Just five more years. <laughs> we'll get there eventually, I promise. And this is why I wanted to do the intercept rather than the rendezvous. Rendezvousing at high orbit is a very slow and painful process. Doing an intercept, though, and then adjusting your orbit's velocity so that you can, uh, you know, orbit the body is a lot less time-consuming because you're closing, you got this, the speed of the planet that's closing, that you're closing with, contributing to your own speed. So if, you got, if you're approaching at 2,000 meters per second, the planet's approaching at 2,000 meters per second, your relative velocity is a close rate of 4,000 meters per second rather than, which if you're on a low delta V craft, intercepts are a bad idea. But if you have a lot of delta V, there's no reason not to consider an intercept. Because it'll just save you time, tons of time. Unless you really badly want to conserve the fuel. In my case, 
I tried for an intercept, but I just couldn't get enough velocity to do it without exp expending an exceptionally higher amount of delta V than I wanted to. Uh, the 21,000 delta V, as I said, it could let this satellite explore the entirety of the system of Sarnus. What I find funny is that the uh, curve net is, tri is alternating between Eve, Urban, and Duna as it deems fit. By the way, this is the madness that is my curve net. Let's see if I'll show the full network here. So we got really well established comms in the lower solar system. This will actually be our first outer solar system commsat. And it'll be the first of many. Ah, right, you want to take a look up what it looks like at Sarnus? This is what it looks like at Sarnus. I'm going to be coming in direct polar to 760 meters, and then I'm going to circularize it. And I plan to do that as well, but since Cassini passed away, I was like, you know what, I want to accelerate my mission to Sarnus because, well, I'm going to miss Cassini. I grew up with Cassini's pictures. My earliest memory of a computer image, like the first JPEG I ever saw, the first thing we did when we got on AOL, was I downloaded, I downloaded a high-resolution image of Saturn, which came from Cassini. That was my first time ever using the internet to load an image. And it took 30 minutes to load on a 5,700 baud modem. Thirty minutes to load a JPEG of Saturn, high resolution JPEG of Saturn on a five thousand seven hundred Bob modem. So it was downloading at five thousand seven hundred kilobytes per second maximum. More likely it was probably downloading at two thousand seven hundred kilobytes per second. Yeah, at the time high definition was like eight hundred by four fifty. <laughs> It was beautiful. But when it got finished, me and my family were just awestruck. I mean, it's just the most beautiful thing. And the only way, the only other way we were going to get a picture of Saturn was buying it on a poster. So yeah, I grew up with Cassini. The probe, even though it's not a person, feels like a really old friend who is a concrete and cemented eternal part of my childhood memory. Because without it, that particular event would have never occurred. And by the way, you guys want, I think Jay was asking for a, yeah, I could probably leave system if I slung, if I did a slingshot around Sarnus, I could probably just, you know, go deep space, goodbye, it's Voyager style. Let's go find the heliopause of sun. It's out there somewhere, people. Yeah, Kerbal, Kerbal, Kerbal 9, Kerbal Space Program 9, when it comes out, maybe 50 to 100 years from now, has full emulation of solar system, we'll have the Kuiper Belt. And then we'll have the heliopause out in the distance. It looks like this giant plasma sheath around the sun. It doesn't. I'm talking about Kerbal 9. It, it's a title that's not released yet. And probably won't be for a very long time, if ever. I don't know. This thing... Kerbal's is a game that I could envision being like the Civilization series. It could have a bazillion iteration. Yeah, encountering a star in an IA revived. That, we could probably do that with this kind of orbit. 
you know, it won't be long, Jay, till I'll be I'll be ready to put that back in, solar panels or not. I'm going to have a beam power system capable of hitting way deep space using hard X-rays. I think that is its pole, isn't it? The storm at its pole? The most impressive Cassini Saturn picture of all the pictures I've seen that Cassini's released, and there are quite a few that are impressive. But the one I favor the most is the one of the storm that has 1,100 mile per hour winds that wrapped around the entire North Pole of Saturn. And that wasn't it. That wasn't the same picture, but it was in the lower it was in the lower latitudes and it formed a ring around the entire planet one storm and it started from this little bitty speck you saw this little speck on saturn and you just saw it mushroom and wrap around the planet and you think our hurricanes are bad and people say that we and people say that our hurricanes are caused by climate change and i will tell you this much if you can look out to our solar system and see storms like that there's no guarantee they won't ever occur here on earth Yeah, so, I mean, don't get too alarmed by the people who say, you know, man-driven climate change is causing all this mess. It may be natural. Saturn and Jupiter has shown us the extremes of what is possible. So I'm kind of... When it comes to climate change and stuff like that, I'm kind of still out. I'm not, I've not, people say that it's a confirmed thing, but I still think it's in the theory stage. They, they really need to do a lot more work to confirm that it's not just nature at work. The sun, for example, this year has thrown out a phenomenal amount of energy that hit Earth. A lot of it hit right during the hurricane showing up. Uh, it released um, a, an X. 9.3 solar flare and an X8. Now, if you take a, a fraction of that infrared energy and just imagine how much of that is getting absorbed by the oceans, that was one huge heat wave. All right, we are about to hit our next rendezvous. And bingo. Hello, Sarnus. And we got our first data coming out from Sarnus. Transmit all data. We will send that to Kerbin Dockyard Ordal Day called I think it's almost out. And right now, we are at really high altitude above Sarnus, I'm pretty sure. See, we are currently retrograde, which is probably a good thing, given that we need to stop our orbit eventually. Is it still a spec? I think it may still be a spec. Hello, where are you, Sarnus? I don't know, so you're out here somewhere. It's still a spec. I think we're locked to retrograde. Yeah. They like Dennis <laughs> for breakfast. See, we need to add just to make sure I don't work past it by accident. There's a periapsis alert. 
Oh, we got quite a few days of falling to do. Darn us, where are you? Getting worried. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Come out of the background like a bat out of hell. <laughs> nope, this is Sarnus. Sarnus is part of the Outer Planets mod for uh, Thok. What is that out there? I'm moving. Another planet. Another uh, moon. Yeah, that's. I think they they did that one in infrared, wasn't it, Iyer? <laughs> all these gravity scan. Let's see. Transfer all data. Lab one. Actually, Moon Lab should have more than enough. Make sure Act does. That transmit all data, not part of it, all of it. On, get on it. Uh, don't have the high unions yet. I'm going to put make one for uh, for later though. This is just a pro, the Cassini Pro Memorial. I didn't send them up together. I really should have. Part of it's going to be figuring out, figuring out which moon of Saturn do we consider to be... Um, which one was it that Hyugen's impact? I forget. I think it was um, crap. I can't remember. Was it Enceladus? No, it was Titan. So yeah, we're going to, have to pick a moon and determine which one is Titan. So we got to figure out that equation first because I want to land it in the right spot. So we need to find out what OPM the version of Titan is. Titan is. So speaking of which, here's a couple of our moons now. I want to guess that that Ecto will probably be considered Titan. Let me got Elu in here and Ovok. L.
<laughs> it is a great mod here. I, I thoroughly have enjoyed playing it. All right, we are almost close to burn time. Two hours. Boy, are we are we getting close to Sarnus now, aka Saturn. Come on, Auto Collector, you're not doing your job. Yeah, if I were to if I were to install OPM, if I didn't already have it, it, it would be using Galileo's version. My only concern now at this point is if I put this thing in place and then install this version of OPM and put a new one in, then we may not. I think this may be Galileo's version, actually. I'm. I think I saw Galileo's name next to it. As a matter of fact, let me load CCAN up. He'll tell me which one we got. While we're doing our descent here. Okay, let's see. OPM. Now, this is definitely the Outer Planets mod by Captain Robau. Captain R O B A U. Last updated version 1.2.2. Uh, I just hope that we don't get anything which destroys it. <laughs> Yeah, I know what you mean. I'm up to 60-something now, or... Alright, coming in hot over Sarnus. We are close to periapsis. I don't think Lindrook's had any new science in a while. I did transfer all, right? Guess not. There we go. Oh, gadget fusion reactor. Keep that science moving. Here comes the grand dive, folks. For a minute, I thought that was a moon. That may have been one I thought it was a moon earlier. The antenna. Ah.
Doesn't it make you kind of nervous diving at over 5,000 meters per second towards a gas giant? This may take some time to actually burn. I may better start now. Now the ironic part is this may make our orbit around the sun even sharper. Oh, okay, it's closing. Wow, it's closing fast, too. We'll just keep that data for now. Thank you very much. Uh, could you ask J JMR, could you ask Galileo for me if I swap planet packs, if Saturn will still be in the same position or not? My big concern is if I swap out now, I may lose what, what things I have out around the outer planets right now. Mind you, I could probably just cheat it back into place, but prefer not to do that if it can just be swapped. Well, wow, every atmospheric band is a biome. That's kind of fun. Which way are we heading? Are we heading towards? Yeah, we're heading towards it. All right, we're going to have to balance these out. And radial out is not the ticket to do it. Apparently now there is radial in. That's a conundrum. Oh, wait, yes it is. Okay, so we're balancing now. Alright, so prograde now. Bring this baby out. Bingo. All right, there we have it, folks. We have our Cassini Memorial in place. It is our permanent installation for a communications relay in deep space. Ah, above all the rest of curve now. Able to hit all four inner planets with these. Now we're going to have a little fun here. F5. Click saved. And just to be certain.
prepare for reentry. There we go, folks. Hit first into Saturn or Sardis. <laughs> Probably. Saturn looks kind of chalky. I've always thought. I mean, the, the atmosphere looks so cloudy and dirty, it almost looks solid, too. Anybody know where the at upper atmosphere of uh, Sarnus, or Saturn or Sarnus is at? I want to guess it's below 270,000. Oh no, we just hit it. We just hit the upper atmosphere. Hey, RG Pill. Turn off the auto collector here because this is not going to be permanently safe, so no reason to collect the data. Ah, true, we can do that too. The body tab and Kerbin Encyclopedia, is that what you're saying? Oh, care. Body. Ah. Your body. High atmosphere altitude is supposed to be 275,000 meters, but we've already hit it somehow. Well, they gave us the high atmosphere. Oh, we entered low space. That's what it was. So it's just a little bit, actually a little bit high, higher than Yule's is. Yeah, it's treating us like we're in atmosphere already. I don't know how long it'll last before it vaporizes. You know what? Let's see how far we can actually get into it without dying. I'm kind of curious. We've got over 18,000 delta V left, even at this altitude. So let's see how we can fall, 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 how far we can fall without disintegrating by pressure. Yep, this is Saturn, aka Sarnus. Well, Sarnus, aka Saturn. This is from OPM, the Outer Planets mod for Kerbal Space Program. There's Jade Sun way off in the distance. Looks like there's a moon there. Yep. Yeah, Outer Planets mod. Starting to get some heat again, so let's slow down some more. I 
wonder if Sarnus has a surface. I bet it doesn't. Hey, uh, Jay, do you happen to know if there's a way to get a pressure reading? Other than, well, I got an idea for that. Where is our bar barometer? Barometer. We just lost our antennas. Oh, crap. Believe it or not, I may have just set our thrust strong enough to keep us from going completely cursed flat. Although, how long that's going to last is hard to say. Yep, it's 4.55 a.m. Eastern Time. The Cine has lost contact. Hey, Bonamic. Thank you for that follow. Same for J Magical Mannix, who followed 14 minutes ago. I just missed it. I do apologize for that, but thank you for the follow then also. Must have been focused on getting the orbit set. When I get uh, focused in on something, it's very easy for me to miss events, despite my best intentions. Hopefully atmospheric pressure will start to lawn dart this thing and will continue to decelerate. What would be really hilarious if it overcame the surface resistance and started flying backwards at this altitude. But I don't think it is going to because our TWR is at 0.43. So it's not, it's not defeating gravity right now. And we have Order Hotchwergen with the follow. Thank you, sir. Uh, seven atmospheric pressures, I think. Pressures are really starting to go up. Well, how, how many kilopascals is in one atmosphere? Anybody know? Let me, let me find a calculator here. So one atmosphere is 101 kilopascals. Good to know. We're nowhere near one Earth atmosphere yet. Well, we're not even near max thrust date. I, I wasn't able to get it up before the antenna snapped off. Great probe antennas. <clears throat> Great probe antennas these are. Atmospheric antennas, they are definitely not. I mean that was with that was like one percent atmosphere that these antennas snapped off on. Think about that. They be delicate. Uh-huh. It's absolutely hilarious that this thing is falling so slowly. You'll notice the delta V is starting to change very quickly.
<clears throat> I'm thinking so too. Yep, a third atmosphere. I can always reload, that's why I saved it. <laughs> we can do it again. What's well, a shame, Jade, is the computers on this are supposed to have an AI that keep them under control, keep the craft under control even when communications is out, but it's not working properly. I need to let Freethinker know that. Because uh, right now we should be technically in control despite the fact the craft is out of control. And this little thing here is supposed to have an AI core on it. I'm thinking it's going to survive most of the way down anyway, Jay. It's just going to do it on its side. I think that it that it'll probably survive until it hits solid ground at the rate it's falling. If there is any solid ground, otherwise it's going to die to pressure. Uh oh, we're over one atmosphere and climbing. That's where it starts to get interesting. We're generating quite a bit of lift. And yeah, this one body is generating a large amount of lift. this thing floats on the surface of Sarnus, I'm going to laugh my butt off. Like if it floats on the atmosphere of Sarnus. Well, I'm beginning to think that might actually happen. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, we're still falling. The uh, pressure is still rising. There is a surface. I think we're going to find it. Otherwise, we might end up in the core of Sarnus. I wonder where they technically, they technically placed the surface at for this thing. Well, there, when space is gone. There's no stars anymore. We are falling into the darkness. Except for a lone, I think that's a moon. They're our only companion right there. At least the only one we can see. Oh, no, there's sun. There's another moon, probably. Oh, there's another moon silhouetted by the sun. Coming in ridiculously slow, people. Well, we'll find out soon. Assuming we don't decelerate to a stop before we actually reach it.
Yep, you're correct. That's probably hell. Right there. Hell there, and who's above hell right now? Uh, huh? Wait a second, that can't be hell. We're on the other side of the planet from hell. That might be Ovok then, and... Late? Yeah, that's probably slain that that might be Ovok, but I think Ovok's the closer of the two. Yep. Ovok and Slate. And let's see what ScanSat is saying about all this. I'm curious. Plus your buddy, does it have Sarnus on the list? It does. And we have some of Sarnus mapped. And we have EJSA coming in with 302 viewers. Not quite enough to debunk his record, but still awesome. <laughs> hey! Welcome aboard. I saw you playing cities earlier. Building that title uh, title barri barricade. Looks like it's coming along pretty well. So what you're looking at here, EJ, is the Outer Planets mod. This is Sarnus, aka Saturn. And we've lost the antennas on our probe because atmosphere ripped them off. We're now at two Earth atmospheres and rising as we descend through the upper layers of the atmosphere to see when it's going to go splat. According to Jay, the Kraken should eat at around 25,000 meters negative. Which we have a long way to fall towards. Matter of fact, let's start doing it and give it a little bit of time acceleration here because this is going to take forever otherwise. <laughs> oh, just negative 25 meters is all it takes? Well, that shouldn't be too hard to get to then. Yeah, I can't believe how slow this thing is falling. Yeah, Rip Cassini. My early, uh, I was telling the crew here earlier, EJ, that my earliest childhood memory, the first computer image I ever saw on AOL, downloaded from the internet, was a Saturn image from Cassini. And it was downloaded on a 5,700 baud modem through AOL. We are now at three Earth atmospheres and rising. <laughs> Getting a little intense. That barometer, too, is just going through the roof. That would be incredibly weird, Jade, if it did. It would also make it the easiest probe to land ever. And who was that with the follow? That was... Van Noel. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Dragon Horde. <laughs> good night, EJ. I know you had a long stream, buddy. You have a good one. And thanks again for bringing your team over. Really appreciate it. Later. Sweet dreams. About Cassini, maybe.
Just don't dream about burning up. That would be kind of harsh. Poor Earth atmosphere is rising like a rocket on that pressure. Holy cow. That pressure gauge is just pegging the needle now. And we have Submech with the follow. Thank you very much. Welcome aboard. Welcome to the Dragon Horde. As the pressure rises, the rate of descent decreases. <laughs> like we're almost in water. Oh, and we have another host coming in, Curly Kerbal with Nine. Welcome aboard, Curly. Thanks for bringing your crew aboard. We are doing the Cassini re-entry pattern for Saturn, except that we have, fortunately, a descent engine. Unfortunately, we've lost comms. Thankfully, I was able to keep the engine on just a little bit before we started descending, and it has been sliding down very slow. I don't know how it's managed to pull this off on such little thrust. A matter of fact, thrust is reading zero at this point. Probably because it's in atmosphere and it's an ion engine. So I'm thinking right now the only thing that's happening is this thing is literally gliding on, on Saturn's atmosphere. And this is what the sky looks like from deep Saturn. We almost can't see the moons anymore. We are up to six Earth atmosphere of the pressure. And again, the barometer is just pegging the needle. I'll have to go on the forums later, Jade, and ask Galileo if these are swappable. If they are, I'll put in his version of this mod. As long as it, yeah, my key thing is not destroying the probe, which took me 15 years to get in place. <laughs> Why don't you get about it, Silent Director? Seven Earth atmospheres. And still rising. and rising at a seemingly exponential rate. And we are falling slower and slower. This is the re-entry of uh, the Cassini Memorial Probe. We're doing a simulation of Cassini's re-entry of Saturn. Which is called Sarnus in the Outer Planets mod. But yeah, Curly's, Curly's got to the point, the heart of what the game is. Yes, yes it is or cartoonified physics sim, pretty much. If you love engineering, you'll love this game. Well, that's pretty much what it's about, is, is building things. Spacecraft, aircraft, boats, subs, I've seen so many crazy craft on this game. Dude. Jade. Can you imagine what Red Baron would do on Sarnus? with this much intake atmosphere? <laughs> I 
<laughs> Indeed. Definitely worthy of the Rospra. And we are now at 10 Earth Atmospheres. <laughs> That's an idea for the future. That'll be one entertaining stream. We are skimming along on the atmosphere of Sarnus at Mach 20. And just in case I missed them, we've got Sudden Make and Final recently following. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Welcome to the Dragon Horde. Oh, good grief. Eleven atmospheres. Hey, uh, I plan on streaming for quite some time on Thanksgiving weekend. I've got four days off. I can't go out of town. One of those days, I'm going to be doing a 24-hour stream. So if you guys want to catch me, when I'm having, when I'm going to have plenty of time to plan and do a lot of stuff, I will be very much available Thanksgiving weekend. I don't know exactly which day I'm going to do the 24-hour stream yet, though. But I will be posting it on my events and on my chat uh, feed. So if you follow me, you'll be updated on that. And we are really getting deep, man. It's starting to cut out the sun. Unless we just went, oh, we're over the horizon from the sun. We're going into Saturn or Sarnus night. Man, it is a deep and murky night. This beats Eve all the pieces in terms of murkiness. So we're at 1,000, wow, 13 atmospheres. Yeah, Twitch is always being twitchy. That's okay, Curly. I know you're hosting me. I saw the host message come up. You're fine. I appreciate it, man, more than anything. And I doubt we have much more information from... Yeah. No new updates because this is how short our flight path has been. But our reentry has been so slow <laughs> that we haven't covered a lot of ground. <laughs> That's hilarious. Good thing this is a just for th fun thing. I'll actually have the probe and functional. Oh, 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 we got something wild coming up here. Jade, Jade, the darkness, the darkness is coming for us, Jade. That evil. That surface of planet that isn't actually a surface of planet evil is coming. Jade, I think I'm about to smack something. Ah! 250 meters deep, there's your answer. Did anybody catch the last reading on the um, pressure probe? Hello, Kraken Den. I think we just found the Kraken's Den, for sure. Well and deep in the core of Sardis. Hey look, it's some Terran sun. I think technically this would be the surface of Sardis. Hey look, there's a moon underground. And our pieces of our probe go on forever. RIP! <laughs> Yeah, clip it. Clip it, somebody clip it. Alright, back to our save game. Oh, here's the message finally. So, mission time elapsed for our for Casino Memorial travel was 11 years, 94 days, 5 hours for the total journey that used Jewel as a slingshot to get here. And it's kind of a weird journey too. We went up to Jewel, 
used Yule to slow down, fell back to the sun and around the sun, and then came back up the other side. High speed achieved 1,843,290 meters per second. That was probably when we went around the periapsis of the sun. As the altitude, 126 billion meters. High speed over land, 1,843,000 again, probably at the periapsis of the sun. Uh, 1,418, so 14 Earth atmospheres at the surface of Sardis, a.k.a. Saturn, in OPM. Ground distance covered, uh, 100,000, million, billion, 164 trillion mi meters. I keep thinking M's miles, but it's the meters on this game. Uh, most G's force in Europe was a relatively gentle 1.7, despite the slingshot around Joule. Which is very unexpected. Very unexpected. I question that number. Unless that big G means giga, which I doubt it. What the trip? All right, let's restore our quick save. Yep, 14 atmospheres at surface of Saturn, a.k.a. Sarnus, in OPM. Uh, a, a single atmosphere is about 101 um, kilopascals. So, multiply by 14, you get 14, 14. So, slightly over 14 atmospheres. Not by much. And probably the only reason it went above 14 atmospheres is where it went slamming through the planet. So yeah, there was our entertainment and our memorial descent for the Cassini mission. I still have hours left to stream, so we're going to have to find some new stuff to do. Any proposals?